Thank you very much. Is there anyone here that this is their first time they're at the association meeting? Please raise your hand, please stand up. If you, and welcome our residents. Any old residents that are first time you've been here? <laughs> okay. Well, the first thing on the agenda, uh, every month, uh, at the beginning of each month, I'd like to introduce uh, our staff. Uh, last month, we introduced the maintenance people. And now I'm going to introduce the kitchen staff if they arrive. One more minute. We'll have another moment of silence here. <laughs> I understand they're cooking lunch. I don't know why they can't be here, and that they're cooking lunch, they said. So I told them to drop everything. <laughs> well, why don't we start with Jan? Jan can start, and then uh, and then by that time, we'll have the full kitchen. Well, there's Judy, that's a good point. It's, are these the only two people that are cooking today? Jan's on their way up. They're on their way up. I have to spread out the staffing. Seven days or so. All right. So we never have everybody here at the same time. So what we're going to have is for the people that are actually in the back that do the cooking, the cleaning, the washing, and all that that you may never see when you come down to dining. Uh, I want to introduce them when they when they all arrive, and then later on uh, we'll introduce the dining room, the front staff, the ones who uh, work with Alfredo, etc. And they they don't show up until after ten thirty. So. Uh, Anyway, Jane, why don't you start out, and as soon as, as soon as we see the kitchen staff, we can introduce them. I don't want to hold them up, so I I can always stop partway through mine. So. Yeah. Okay. Well, good morning, everyone. Good morning. Welcome. Good morning, Zoom land. So I don't know if you know this, but there's a lot of smart people out in the world, <laughs> and they do a lot of good things. And there's also a lot of smart people out in the world that don't do nice things. They're deceitful and they like to make up things. Oh, there's Jen. Wanna go? Are there more? Uh, Sam is in the class. Okay, all right. So uh, unfortunately I have to start this with uh, a little warning. There has been a real uptick in scams. And unfortunately it has hit our campus that we know of at least five times. So five different residents have reported scams. We've been able to help some of those folks. If you report them to us, we will do our best. Uh, we were able to get a pretty significant uh, credit card charge off of somebody's credit card. Uh, but there are a lot of phone scams. There are a lot of uh, computer scams. So please be careful. Know what you're clicking on. Do not click uh, on things that are absolutely too good to be true. And there are a lot of things out there. And also if they say they can protect your computer, if you allow them to remote in, they add very bad. So um, we as staff get uh, messages sent to us that are actually scams and phishing. And uh, we have to select whether we're gonna open it or not. And if we open it, guess what we get to do? A lot of training because you shouldn't have opened it. So uh, we get that training. Uh, we, we'd like to be able to help you as much as we can as well. So if you ever have any questions or anything, please let us know. You ready? Okay. Come on up, you shy folks. <laughs> Back of the house doesn't mean you're not gonna be seen. All right, obviously this is not the entire staff we have in the back kitchen. Obviously we need more than four people to feed 200 people for time a day, but these are the ones that uh, we pulled out from the kitchen and the others are still making uh, peanut butter jelly sandwiches for us for lunch. But anyway, I'd yeah. <laughs> like to introduce themselves and how long they've been here and what is your function back there? What, the, what are you doing back in the kitchen that we don't know about? Hi, I'm Jenny. I'm sous chef. I've been here uh, approximately seven years, I believe. What do you do? Um, I, <laughs> <laughs> I make a lot of the uh, vegetarian entrees and uh, soups and sauces and everything. <laughs> 
my name is Mark Chittam. I'm the chef here. Uh, Take your mask off for the photo. <laughs> oh, yes. Well, been here 13, 14 years. Not sure. Um, I do everything. <laughs> Hi, I'm Brian Torrance. Uh, been here oh two weeks now in this capacity. <laughs> um, the executive chef, um, kind of a new position to try to help um, or try to just add to the services that we're providing for the residents here. Um, some of you may remember me from uh, nine or so years ago when I was here. Uh, it is great to be back at Kendall, and I can't tell you what I do because we're still kind of working on that. <laughs> My name is Sam Yohana Jr. and I clean everything you eat out of. <laughs> Mask off, smile. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. This is our kitchen staff. Here again. It picks up the sound better the closer you are. <coughs> okay, I do as I'm told. <laughs> All right, uh, so scams, bad. If you need help, let us know. Uh, but if we know, we can probably help you more than if we don't know. The other thing I wanted to mention is we are having, again, some real issues with folks um, asking staff, especially maintenance, to do more above and beyond what the work order um, stated that you placed uh, in the system. So what that does is that puts staff in a very uncomfortable situation. Uh, they don't like to say no to you, especially if you're asking them to do something. Uh, but it also puts them behind in their scheduled work. And I know that you can understand what that means for maintenance. They're always running around like crazy men. And um, it's, it's hard to keep up with everything. But if we're asking them to do multiple things that were not scheduled, uh, that really throws them behind. So if you have multiple items that you need done, please put that in a work order so that then Kathy can actually put enough time aside for them to complete all the tasks that you have for them to do. So if you can do that and work with Kathy, that would be great. IT has the same process, work orders. Um, you know, to, to grab Harold or Greg in the middle of the hallway and say, I need, I need, uh, it takes away a lot of time for them as well. So if we can just ask you to follow the process, that would be great. If you have ways that we can improve upon the process, I'm sure Todd and Greg would love to hear from you. Uh, so we now have a mass alert system in place. And for those of you who might not know what that is, that is an opportunity for us to get things out to you in mass, either through email or phone. Uh, and what we will be doing is we will be using that system for extreme emergency situations. So it's not going to be a text from us saying, hey, guess what? We're supposed to get snow tomorrow. Please be careful. <laughs> Notice the example. We're not getting any snow. What's up with that? <laughs> <sighs> so frustrating living here. <laughs> but it'll be active attackers on the campus. It would be extreme weather conditions, such as a spotted tornado. It will be fire, hazardous material spills. Uh, and then last but not least, which we never get, power outages. <laughs> so more to come on that. Please be aware that we do have the system. We're being trained on that system and uh, creating those messages that would be sent out to all of you. So stay, uh, stay tuned to that and we'll get you more information. <clears throat> The We Care Connect survey. Anybody familiar with the We Care Connect survey? Okay, thank you. That's the survey that you get from us asking you to give us feedback. So we've heard feedback on that, that you don't like it, and uh, that there's not enough space for you to be more specific. So does management respond to me? We get a lot of no's. But with the no's, 
we don't get anything. What does no mean? So we have, uh, I, I've asked Jessica to work with me uh, and others that we were able to get them to change some yes, no questions, uh, not necessarily the yes, no part, but then to give you opportunity to comment on what you mean by your yes or no. So there are probably five questions that we changed around yeah, that. Seven. Seven, seven questions that we changed around to give you a little bit more opportunity to give us better feedback. So um, it's yearly for those of you who have been here uh, and for those uh, that are new, you get a couple extras so that we know how you've done along the way. Uh, but if you're due for that We Care Connect survey, then you will see that it looks a little different. So, and I hate to to do this, but we are so proud of Jessica and the fact that she will be taking on a new adventure at Kendall Corp. So we're mad at Kendall Corp right now, <laughs> but we will get over it because of the fact that we're excited for Jessica and we're appreciative for everything that she's done for us here over the past eight years. And uh, just the past two and a half for me, she's been a great colleague. And uh, I'm excited that we get to continue to work with Jessica, just in a different way. Uh, but she still lives in Mexico. <laughs> so we know where to find her. <laughs> and we will find her. So we have posted the position uh, externally as well as internally. And uh, we'll keep you posted on that outcome of our search. But I just wanted to take a moment to say thank you to Jessica and give you all an opportunity to, to say thank you. And then last but not least, I do want to thank the residents who participated in my uh, yearly CEO evaluation process. Uh, always great feedback for me, and it helps me be a better leader, and it makes me um, focus on the right things. So for those of you who participated, I want to say thank you for that. And um, I know it's quite a process. I think they interview uh, more than half of Rockbridge County. <laughs> Uh, but it's it's always helpful. So it's loud and clear that you want me to be more visible and that you want to get to know me better. So I will obviously need to balance my meeting schedule to make this happen. So I'm looking for volunteers to sit in on my meetings for me. <laughs> And let me tell you, if she's the only volunteer, it's going to be very scary for you. <laughs> so I need volunteers so that I can party with you more. Uh, but no, all kidding aside, uh, if you have ideas uh, on gatherings and ways that you would like to see that happen, please don't be shy. Speak up. Stephanie uh, as well. Uh, Stephanie and I will try to figure out ways we can do that uh, and uh, make sure that I am out and about and, and a bit more visible. So uh, thank you for that feedback and we will do our best to try to make that happen. Okay. Any questions? Yes, Bruce. Can the mass notification system, will that be text or email and would you test it with the communities at some point? Right, so more to come on that, Bruce. Uh, we will be getting you a lot more information. Okay. Let us get our training done. Let us okay. figure out how it will be mass. Uh, it will be various ways we can get to you. Fine. I don't know that we can actually select. Uh, you might get an email and a text. So we're still trying to figure all that out and what that looks like. We'll be, we'll be in communication. We will be in communication with you, yes. But we will be testing the system. But you will know that it's a test. So. Okay, great. Thank you, everyone. I have one suggestion. I think every Monday morning, Jan should switch with Karen at the front desk, and then we'll see Jan at the front desk every Monday morning here, and maybe that'll help increase her visibility there. And she'll see all the problems that Karen has. If we all go to her. She'd be the um, all-knowing person who knows how what's going on at Kendall. Anyway, uh, next up we have Todd, our facilities manager, director. 
or person in charge anyway. <laughs> All right, good morning. We've been pretty busy, as you can imagine, so I'm just going to hit some of the main highlights for you all. I'll start with some real good news. The maintenance team is supposed to be a roster of seven people. For a couple months, we've had a, a roster of five people, and on some days, due to overtime and comp time and illness, we've had as few as two people here. Uh, two people trying to do seven people's worth of to-dos kind of looks like my weekend list from, from my wife. So yeah, you know, <laughs> at the end of the day, it's like, uh oh, I'm still in trouble. So the good news is we have two new folks starting on Monday. And that will bring our roster up to seven. I'm very optimistic. I think we had a, a great candidate pool come in. We had a pretty rigorous process and lots of really qualified people who I'm excited to, to pick the top two and have them coming in. So next month, hopefully, we'll have a lot more done and, and some more good news to share with you. But things are moving. Uh, the grill exhaust for the dining room, which has been all broken and offline for some time, they are here today starting that repair. So uh, if you see a big green lift drive by the window while I'm talking, that's what that's for. Um, so they'll be doing some work on the roof and in the attic. It's about two or three days of work. And then you all can start yelling at Judy about when she'll be ready to fire the grill back up. Because my little piece of that project is done. Start it before the equipment the That'll be Highland. So yell at Highland. <laughs> uh, the backup generator automatic transfer switch has arrived. We are currently in the process of scheduling that work. That will be a somewhat disruptive power outage when we do it. So you will get a couple weeks notice, uh, but we have some tentative dates. We're working out some coordination to make that work. Uh, but that when that is done, we will have good, fast, automatic backup power. Um, that we need. Uh, so a little bit of pain for a few hours to get that done. It's just what has to be, and I think in the long run, it's going to be well worth it. So uh, more, more to follow on that. The, the large roofing project uh, for this, this year is moving forward. That's new roofing on North, South, and Anderson. I've now had three companies in here, most recently yesterday, um, helping me design that project and start working on their quotes. A big part of that project, I'm having them add some safety tie-offs up at these roof areas because right now I have no safe or legal way to put anyone on the roof. Um, it's a residential designed roof, but there's commercial equipment up there. I can't legally put safely or legally put someone up there. So that's why we have problems with gutters and roofs on the equipment because I, I do not have a way to get anyone up there, nor do I have lift access due to some of the trees and other things that have been put around here. We're going to fix that built into this roofing project, and then uh, then I'll be telling Highland to climb out on the roof and then use the little <laughs> the little cable that I put out there for them. Uh, the elevator project is progressing, just in terms of scheduling. We're still months and months out from elevator two, but that is still on schedule. Some major uh, HVAC, heating, ventilating, air conditioning repairs are underway uh, for Air Handler One and Air Handler Two. That is North, South, and Anderson Hall. Um, you may have slim chance of this, but you may have noticed one or two minutes where it was either too cold or too hot in the last uh, recent years, right? We have some pretty big control problems where the unit's either all the way working or all the way off and no in between. Uh, we're fixing that. Um, I couldn't figure it out. Highland couldn't figure it out. There's some pretty, pretty broken stuff down there. So we called the train people. We have a uh, contract with them. They're here as we speak for the third time down there trying to figure it out. Um, I'm like, too bad you signed the contract, so you got to get it. Um, so that'll be a pretty large project, and that will fix uh, some of our pretty big heating and cooling problems in these main common areas when that's done. So that's underway as well. You may have seen security lock and key here. We have about 15 door or opener uh, projects scattered around the location. The first batch of them have been done. They're now on the second or third batch. Um, they're not all fixed yet, but we're moving in the right direction on that, hopefully. We've done some pretty significant renovation work, partnering with the marketing folks to try to get in and put in some upgraded infrastructure equipment and insulation in some of the uh, locations as they turn over as well. So you may see us run around doing some of that. The interior signage project, it's about a dozen interior signs, a project from October. Uh, they emailed me this morning and said, hey, it's done, we're coming today. Oh, well, I'm, okay, thanks for the notice on that. But anyway, <laughs> hopefully by the end of the day, our October 22 sign project will be done. They should be here today. Those up. 
And the last thing I want to mention is the pond project with the WNL students is still underway and going well. There, one professor asked me if they could leave those yellow and red signs up because they have brought an engineering class over several sections of it different times to use their ground penetrating radar to do some mapping tied into the pond project. The mapping we needed was done, uh, but since they had this first batch of students do it and he asked if he could give the other students that opportunity, I said, sure. So please bear with us. You'll see a little bit of ugly marking signs up there. They're up there a lot longer than I thought they would be. But there are groups of students coming and using that. And I didn't want one student to get an A and another to get an F because we pulled the signs halfway through the project. So as soon as they're done, we will pull those down and get back to work with our students. Okay, that was my big list of things. Thank you. Yes, question. How many zero that got cold? We only, I believe it was only three this year because we lost our hunter due to a health issue. In mid season, it was very difficult to find backup hunters to come in. So I've got a much better understanding of that program. And uh, I, I think I'll either be able to do a little bit of late season because that season is allowed to go to March or we'll have a much more aggressive one next year. But we did very little this year due to a bunch of circumstances that piled up. Was there another question? Yes. Um, do you offer advanced training to any of the maintenance men if they want to improve their skills? That is a great question. Uh, she asked if we offer any kind of training for our staff if they want to improve their skills. Starting in January for the 23, both evaluations and pay structure, I put in a fairly formal advancement uh, program where our, our guys are coded as Tech 1, Tech 2, or Tech 3, and we've established criteria for what those are, and there's compensation improvements as you move through that where if you wanna go get your journeyman or master's cards in electrician or carpentry or plumbing or something we find useful, um, we can move you through that progression and increase your, your compensation. That is a brand new program. I don't have folks who are doing it yet, but I've been working with our first two interested guys um, with the course catalogs. And some of these are remote courses offered by train, for example, for HVAC. Some are on site, either through community college or down at uh, some of the companies like Train have a location in Roanoke where you can go for two days and get training. So yes, we are offering that, it is new. I don't have a list of uh, 10 success stories yet, but hopefully in a few months, I'll be able to share a couple of our folks who take advantage of that and improve their, their formal training skills. Good question, thank you. Who pays for that? We built that into our training because it's uh, as long as it's related to work, we built that into my training budget um, because it benefits us in the long run. If they want to take underwater basket weaving, they're on their own. <laughs> All right, thank you. All right, for her final performance today, we have Jessica. As we know, this has been her last opportunity to speak to us as the group. Uh, and so we certainly recognize all the support that we have received from her. And somebody suggested that how many people moved in here when Jessica, through the Jessica's efforts here? Please stand up, all those who were here while Jessica was. So she was influential in getting you here. And I said, Yeah, well, these people, how did you get in here anyway? So, must have been somebody before Jessica. But. Anyway, we thank you, Jessica, for all your work. And I know you're invited to back because somebody has to set up this Zoom thing here. And that's Jessica that handles that. So you still have that opportunity to come here every month. If you will. And she'll be locally for a while anyway. But Jessica, it's okay. yours. Well, thank you very much. And um, Katie uh, was here getting trained on this. So now you don't need them, you, you don't need me here anymore. <laughs> but um, I, I really do appreciate that. I like how you you said, you know, over a lot of folks that have that live here now at Kendall Lexington have moved in over the last eight years. And um, so uh, it's a very important organization to me. And I'm very excited. So where, while I'm sad to be leaving here, it really does feel like exactly the right next step for me, um, for wanting a change, wanting a promotion, but still staying with Kendall. I truly believe in the values and um, I love the organization. So um, 
I'm very happy about that. I'm, I, and um, as Paul mentioned, uh, Jan mentioned, I'll be in Lexington working remotely with travel up to Kendall's new office in Newark, Delaware. Uh, New Newark, yeah. Newark. 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 <laughs> I'm from New York, so I say Newark, New Jersey. So. Uh, <laughs> uh, so yeah, so that'll be really neat. So for for WNL soccer fans, you don't have to worry about that. <laughs> um, so uh, for, for uh, actually, I have to say something, you know, <laughs> about occupancy here. Um, really, uh, Katie will mention how. For January and February, now we haven't gotten the snow, um, so but folks are still traveling here and meeting. So we've had a, a, a busier January and February than typical. And she'll tell you a little bit about that. Um, but the you know one hour before Kevin left to go on his cruise, he signed another reservation for a cottage on Sycamore Lane. So that leaves us a total of um, to, well tomorrow. Uh, Pat is Kendarian. We'll will be closing on apartment 318, and she'll be moving in soon, but we don't know when. And then we'll have seven more closings already scheduled. So I, as I mentioned in the past, you know the actuaries that Felicia works with tell us that we'll have nine a year. Well, this is eight, so <laughs> but it's scheduled through the summer. Um, but I'm sure we'll have some more. We'll have two um, folks moving from cottages into apartments in March. So that'll be great. Um, and we have a few other things on the horizon that we know there's some apartments opening up. So we're currently reserving those. And then one of Todd's other projects is getting some work done to Isabel's cottage so that we can reserve that one again. So that is also on the horizon. We have a really great uh, Zoom event planned for tomorrow on sports and fitness activities. Uh, many of you and many of our prospects are very interested in, in wellness and making sure they'll be able to stay active when they move here. Um, so I think we're up to about 22 folks have registered for that, which is a great number for us. And then, of course, partnering with CNE and other uh, committees to welcome our guests here. Um, Katie, you want to come up? Kevin is here today, um, but he's uh, feeling fine. He's had, he's had some exposure, so he's just staying in his office for now. Well, that's going to be hard to follow. <laughs> <laughs> I will start out by saying, Kevin and I are doing our best to forgive corporate. <laughs> <laughs> we are very, very excited for Jessica. We know this is the perfect opportunity for her. If you read the job description, they wrote it for her, <laughs> despite our, our apprehension of that. Um, but that being said, Jessica has set us up incredibly well. Um, Kevin and I are not worried at all in the interim. We trust Jan's judgment. She had brought in some wonderful core leadership team members. So we are excited to see what the next steps are. Um, I'm sure she's gonna be getting lots of applications. So hopefully you can be a somewhat speedy process so you're not just stuck with the two of us. Um, but that being said, we did have a busy month. Last, since last time we talked to you, we have added four more waitlist members. So that brings us up to eight for the year. Our goal for the year is 30. So we're doing okay there. And they have come from Florida, Lexington, and then a couple from Madison, Virginia. Kevin did such a great job on a tour that they sent four or five more friends to us. <laughs> so we'll take them. And then over this last month, we have also had 13 tours, triads, and meetings. And they come from a variety of places too, everywhere from um, New York, all over Virginia, um, including Santon, North Garden, Richmond, a couple from Madison, Rose. So we are still bringing in a lot of people and we look forward, we're gearing up for a busy spring. So thank you all. I appreciate everything you do for us. I'd just like to add one comment. I'm very grateful for this entire team and how they keep our uh, count, our head count so high because it allows us to exist as a smaller CPRC and not have big increases in fees because we have fewer people. Thank you all very much. Yeah. Thank you, John. 
Thank you, Jess, Joe, and staff. And I see in the back here, we have a gathering of our dining room staff here. If they will come forward here. Where's Alfredo? <laughs> He's still plugged in. He's still plugged in. So these are obviously these people you see every day when you're down in the dining room. And they work hard. And, and so I will ask each one to tell us who you are and how long you've been here. And anything else you want to say about you? I don't know much, but okay. All right, I'm Brenda. I've been here. I have been here almost a year in May. I'm Karen, and I've been here almost three years in November. I'm Pedro, and I'm here for two months. I'm Susie, and I've been here for eight months. This is Olga, and she's been here for almost a month now. And I am Kelsey, and I've been here for five years in May. And then come up here and tell us all about herself here. Does anybody have one of those automatic translators here? Uh, if not, but we, oh, we have one here. That's how we communicate with her. Uh, we that, use it. You do communicate yep. with her, but we're happy to see her and her, her sister. Her sister won't be here for four. But it's her sister. The, uh, so we welcome her from Ukraine. And we welcome her to the United States, and we're happy to have her and her sister here. And she knows exactly what I said, right? Yeah. <laughs> Tell her what I just said. Well, let's squeeze in together so we've got a nice photograph of you. No, man. Oh, thank you. <laughs> just hug each other, smile. Smile. <laughs> Talk to you. <laughs> All right, thank you very much. The next time, bring Alfredo. <laughs> I was talking with Rina yesterday, and Olga has 11 brothers and six sisters. So it's quite a large family. They are waiting for people to come uh, from the Ukraine over here. But it was very interesting. I mean, she had a picture and it was zoop. <laughs> if you did the calculation, 17 kids times nine months, that's about 13 years of pregnancy. <laughs> It's like, oh my gosh. <laughs> I had one, that was enough. <laughs> Dining update. As you know, the grill's being worked on. It should be good to go by Friday. Once we get all the equipment turned on, we will reopen the grill Monday through Friday for lunch and dinner service. We are currently planning on opening the restaurant a little bit more frequently, changing up the menu, changing up the pricing. In addition to that, as Todd mentioned, we will have a day where we will have no power. Interesting, guess what? <laughs> the famous deli bar is coming back. <laughs> it will be picnic style. It'll be a very limited menu. There are no windows in the kitchen, so it gets very dark back there. We're gonna shoot for two soups, deli, cookies, no ice cream. Oh, sorry, no ice cream that day. <laughs> um, only because we don't want everything to defrost. So hopefully that will go well, regardless of whether it's a four or an eight hour um, outage. We always prep a day or two in advance, so lunch and dinner will remain the same. Gordon is unaffected, so we'll be doing deli bar up there and Probably, I'm thinking maybe a pizza from Domino's for that evening in board, and I'll have to price it out. But that's the thought process right now. So when that date is chosen, please bear with us. We will be providing you with awesome salads and lunch meats so you can make your own sandwiches. It's been very well received in the past. It's a little change of pace, something a little different that we don't normally do. So I hope you will enjoy that. What else? We've got the restaurant. We're good. Like I said, we're going to look at that menu and move to more of an a la carte menu. And 
I think that's about it. When will you open it up to outsiders? <laughs> so we, we wanted to run it for a quarter of the year through the end of March to go ahead and make sure that all the residents that wanted to participate can participate. After that, we'll be looking at opening up to all your favorite friends and families from the outer community, your family members that might live nearby that may wish to dine in the restaurant. Which nights? Sorry? How many nights? We'll start with two and then we'll add on to three, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and then we'll add on Saturday. We are looking to get back to what most of you know is normal a Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday evening. We currently have one waitress that is skilled, so I have to start looking at training more to coordinate more folks. So I want you to come to the restaurant and enjoy your experience and not get frustrated because we haven't had the time or the skill level to get trained. So any other questions? Yes. Are you fully staffed yet? Um, for the front of the house, for the existing services that we provide, I am fully staffed in the front of the house. If we move into a breakfast mode, I'll need another couple of folks. If we move into doing more functions, I'm still short one full time cook and one cook at 32 hours. So this week is very, very busy between the restaurant and a couple of memorial services. So it's gonna be a long week, but we're trying to get everybody in. Like Jan said, we don't like to say no. And a lot of times we should say no and we don't, and we wind up shooting ourselves in the foot. So we're always working to get all of those service points open and good to go moving forward. Any other questions? Here's Paul. I think what's been said when they shut off the power here, if you want a hot meal, you go to Borden, right? Is that what we're inviting you to go to for your hot meal? <laughs> oh, she didn't say that. Oh, well, I thought that'd be a good idea. Otherwise, it's peanut butter and jelly. You bring your own jelly if you don't like what they serve in the dining room uh, on paper plates. But that's only one day. Hopefully, it'll just be one day. Um, or you can all go out to dinner someplace. So uh, there's many restaurants in town and just skip the dining room that particular day. And also, uh, you'll find out uh, it doesn't affect the entire campus here. It's mainly the North Building and Dining Room in Anderson. Um, but they'll they'll let you know which areas are affected. Uh, it does, as far as I know, it doesn't affect the South Building. So anybody who lives in the South Building, if they want to invite any of us from the North Building, we'll have electricity for eight hours over to your house. Uh, I'm I'm available. Anybody else on the North Side be available to be invited to all those nice folks in the South Building or up in the cottages, you know, up in the cluster cottages, whatever. So. Uh, feel free to invite us all over that day when you find out which day we, we don't have electricity. Anyway, next up we have Diane on the culture and entertainment update. Seeing if I can get here without tripping on that. You know, sitting here at the meeting, it's really impressive to hear from staff all the things that go on that we don't, well, we know they're going on, but um, I think it is from the residential point of view too, the different committees and what it is that they're doing uh, to make things happen that we all can participate in, fitness center, on the campus and round and about. And I'm here to talk about the programs <clears throat> that the c &E committee has planned. And things seem to cluster together on what it is that we're planning. And this week is busy. Um, this afternoon, the Kendall Singers are singing. Tomorrow, Tom Camden, who's head of uh, special collections at Washington and Lee, will come. And he's bringing with him some uh, treasures from the archives at Washington and Lee. If you haven't ever been to a program that Tom Camden gives, don't miss it. He's retiring this year, but Tom takes a plain piece of paper. And by the time he's done, you think, 
Oh my word, really? <laughs> so I hope you do take advantage um, of that. And then Friday, we have karaoke night uh, again. And again, if you haven't uh, ever seen a karaoke night, come and sit and watch or participate. It's really fun. Uh, Dennis is preparing some of his great foods and um, we will have a little bit of beer and wine here uh, for you to do it too. So I think you'll enjoy it. And I also want to point out that we're, uh, we have three weekly things that we coordinate with the uh, residents or for the CNE committee. One is the movies, which Margaret Fletcher does a great job with twice a week. We have Sunday performances, which Vic has been um, getting some good things that he's live streaming. And we've started <coughs> game day that Sue Pipel is coordinating down in the cafe area. Just some fun games that you might want to participate. We urge you to come. Don't need to sign up. Just come and uh, do what you can. Next week, Ed Dooley will be presenting his digital images of the pictures that you saw in the gallery. And he said with modern tech that he can now have us kind of go down the street in Lexington in the 1860s. We have invited uh, both the Historical Society um, group and Rockbridge um, his, HLF, a Historic Lexington Foundation to come and just has invited uh, the waitlist people. And we will have a wine reception following. That begins at four, not 4.30. So just so you know that. And then in March, we have a lot of different things lined up. So we hope that you look on the calendar, on the bulletin boards, on Katie, and read the notices from Stephanie. And if you have ideas, we'd love to hear about them. Thanks. Thank you very much, Diane. Of course, this is a very hardworking committee. You're trying to uh, schedule many different types of activities. They go out to restaurants every month, and they bring in uh, different uh, folks to come in here in Kendall Hall. And then we go out to w &L. Uh, We're thankful that we have three colleges here right in our within our county here, and they put on great performances during the school year. So. Uh, please make use of all these uh, great opportunities that the committee comes up with. And if you know of anything uh, that might be of interest, a, a trip somewhere or, or an activity that you heard about that you might be of interest to us, please let this Diane and the c and &E committee know about it so they could plan something like that for all of us. Uh, next up, we have Sue. Is Sue here? Yeah. Oh, that's good. <laughs> We have Sue, she's gonna give us an update on the three North Committee works. Hi, I'm, I'm going to speak, bit, give you an update on the three North Committee. You know that um, we're following the three North plan, which uh, you all gave us a lot of input into uh, through focus groups. And uh, first of all, many of you have been to the dog park that's going on and going strong. And the canine owners group is going to improve it. Benches are gonna be added and some shade canopies. And if you haven't been there, I, I encourage you to go down there and watch the dogs run around like crazy. <laughs> um, the, Daisy May, I think is the fastest of the lot. <laughs> <by my estimation. laughs> and I've been practicing using um, a video camera on her <laughs> to see if I can catch the motion. Um, another thing our committee has been worked on is the dumpster screening and uh, more trees are gonna be added there. A big project for us is uh, Hickory Hill. Now Hickory Hill has been renamed, okay? <laughs> it, speaking of dogs, here's <laughs> uh, a dog park, <laughs> regular. Um, uh, Hickory Hill has been renamed Sycamore Hill. Sycamore Hill. Okay, so just remember to start calling it that. <laughs> um, and what the committee has taken on Sycamore Hill is a major project, partly because it definitely is a signature location on this campus. If you haven't been up there, you would be amazed at the views. It's not just another spot down here. It really is different. And um, one of the first things we did was we got a, a, 
a trail up there and the trail has been laid out. If you've been on the trail, it's kind of muddy <laughs> and the grass has not taken yet. Well, hopefully that will change because um, this spring, uh, Mike Orison is going to add some um, topsoil to the trail and it's going to be seeded with native grasses and wildflower. Not the, the trail itself will be fescue, but around the trail, it will be native grasses and wildflowers. Um, now, the native grasses and wildflowers are not only beautiful, but if we have more areas of pasture on campus, and this is a pasture, it will really save money because you don't have to mow it every week. Um, there are different ideas about how often you have to mow uh, native grasses and areas like that. Uh, a lot of people think once a year is uh, sufficient. So that would um, be a big change. And um, on Tuesday, March 21st at 4 p.m., Justin Folks of the Virginia Department of Forestry will speak on speak in Kendall Hall uh, on the benefits of uh, native grasses in areas like Sycamore Hill. And uh, the Three North Committee also has a subcommittee that is looking into pasture management, not just in that area, but all over campus and try to designate areas that don't have to be mowed really short every week and um, uh, could be turned into native grasses and um, uh, more pasture, but would still have trails through them. It would be wide enough so you could safely walk through those areas without having ticks jump up on you which is one thing people are always concerned about. Um, now the committee is also looking um, uh, to build a 16 foot by 18 foot timber frame structure with an attached lean-to on top of Sycamore Hill. And uh, we've uh, requests for cost estimates are out, but we haven't heard back. And we want to reassure you that we're not going to have sky high costs that will uh, break our budget. Um, we don't know how much it will cost yet. We, we're, we're at the beginning stages of this, but we would really like to have that built this year if possible. Um, the timber frame structure was um, um, uh, come, came from a focus group discussions and uh, many of you went to those focus group discussions um, that were held earlier um, this winter. Um, we would like golf cart access to um, Sycamore Hills and that would help Webster people get up there and also people who, uh, for whom that's too much of a walk. And uh, the canine owners group would also like uh, golf cart access to the dog park and so we are looking into um, a golf cart. Uh, let me see. Um, you might wonder what we're looking at longer, longer term. Some people ask, why aren't we starting with Kendall Park? And Kendall Park is that area where all the uh, construction um, uh, vans were when Nielsen was here. It's a flat area um, off of, um, um, <coughs> Uh, what's this? Spring, what? Spring lot. Spring lot. Spring lot. Yeah, Spring lot Drive, and um, we view that as a much bigger project. And it, the Hickory, the, oops, <laughs> <laughs> the Sycamore, the Sycamore Hill um, is is kind of a more modest um, uh, um, development, which will test out some of the ideas that might end up being used. Um, eventually on uh, Kendall Park. Um, we need to know how Kendall Park might be used and get some feeling for activities there. And um, coming up is games day. That would be outdoor games, not indoor games like Diane was talking about. On Wednesday, May 3rd from 1 to 4 p.m. And help me out, it's gonna be croquet, bocce. What's that thing where you throw the... Corn, cornhole. cornhole and things like that. And so that will sort of test out interest there. Um, 
and I'd be happy to answer any questions you have. And my committee's here to back me up. <laughs> okay, thank you. I understand there's a, uh, if you want to watch the dogs romping through the dog park, there's a, what, Saturday at two o'clock? Somebody told me is the best time to go down there. That's where most of the dogs or a lot of the dogs are there. So if you want to see how the dog park is used and all the dogs down there come on Saturday at two o'clock and you'll, that's when they put on their weekly show. <laughs> anyway, next up is Ted Burroughs is going to give us a talk on something, photos maybe. And not a talk, just an invitation. Uh, if you noticed in the recent connections, the photo gang is hoping that a lot of you will take more pictures than you're accustomed to. The digital display we have down by the alcove, uh, you may remember the during the Christmas holiday season, we had a, a rotation of photos by lots of different residents. We want to get wide ranging photos to put on the screen as we collect them, be it flowers, be it sunsets, be it anything other than just your family that's visiting. You, you can uh, deliver the photos to Vic Crane uh, electronically. If you can't remember that, anybody who's on the photo game could take it and, and pass it on. But um, it'll be a success only if lots of you take pictures and give them to us. Thanks. Thank you, Dennis. And now we have Harden to talk about Kendall College, another successful one we just had. And you can tell us what's up coming up in the future. Good morning, everyone. <clears throat> And I'm really pleased to be able to say good morning. And I'll tell you why. When uh, Paul sent me a copy of the agenda, I looked at it and I counted up all the minutes of everybody who was scheduled to speak ahead of me. And it came to 120 minutes. <laughs> That's two hours, which meant if I came at 12 noon, I would be addressing you as good afternoon. I'm happy to say good morning. And I'm also happy to give you an alert on our next Kendall College program, which will be in April. Uh, and I'm excited about it because we put it together in a little more than a week. And uh, the timing of this came for me to tell you about it. And uh, there will also be an article in the March issue of Connections, uh, which will give you more information than I'm going to share with you today. Uh, it's exciting for me, and I want you to be as excited about this as I am. Um, the subject is something that we've not had for years here at Kendall College, money or finance. Uh, the last time we had any such Kendall College program was about 15 years ago. Uh, two, in two years, 2007 and 2009, John Gunn gave talks on economics. And to my knowledge, they are the only programs we've had that touched on finance or economics or money. Uh, this series of three lectures uh, will be on investments and not just your usual investments that you worry about from time to time in your own life. Um, I'm really excited about the speaker, and I'll tell you why. Uh, our speaker will be Aliyah Basuni. Aliyah is Egyptian. She's been at WNL in the finance department for about five years. Uh, she's an associate professor of economics and she teaches finance courses. Washington and Lee got her from the American University in Cairo, where she had her education, both. Uh, uh, her undergraduate education and her graduate education. Uh, and she was a professor of finance at the American University in Cairo when 
WNL induced her to come here and <clears throat> teach some of the same things. She teaches various finance courses, including those in managerial finance, investments, and multinational business finance. And she is the advisor for the Williams Investment Society. Uh, she may have something to say about that, and I'll just mention that this is a story kind of in itself, but 25 years or so ago, WNL decided to set up a an arrangement so students in the commerce school uh, could be involved in investing real money. That is a piece of Washington and Lee's endowment. So they spun off a million dollars, created the Williams Investment Society, and uh, it has been in operation ever since with students under a professor's guidance making uh, decisions. And that bit of money is up to $17 million today. Um, its current advisor is Aliyah Bassouni, uh, who uh, I don't know whether she's done that since she got here, but she's certainly doing it right now. I was introduced to Aliyah in a Washington Ali Alumni College program this past summer on the Middle East. She spoke for an hour and she was so riveting that I talked to her and I said, I wanna audit one of your classes. The only one she was teaching besides advising the Williams Investment Society this past fall was one on multinational business finance. And as she told the students early in the course, the course was designed for those students who would become CFOs of multinational businesses. Well, that was not in my game plan <laughs> for what I wanted to learn, but I wanted to sit in just to hear her teach students. And I was excited by stuff that I really didn't care much about because she made it interesting and exciting for me. Uh, sign up for her. You will love her. She is terrific. Heather is delighted by her, and she's not somebody who uh, has audited a class ever. <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, the program will be on the first three Wednesdays of April, April 5, 12, and 19. Um, and that program, again, coincidentally, is uh, the last program of Kendall College's first 20 years. Because as Ruth wrote in the, one of the last issues of, of Connections, Kendall College began in May, 2003. So we're now at the end of 20 years. Any questions from anyone? The, the general topic is simply investment issues. Nothing exciting about the topic, but I'll let you know in my article and again next month when we meet here, something about each of the three lecture uh, in the program. Thank you very much. Thank you, Harden, for taking his your five minutes and my 15 minutes as well. It's like, uh, that's why I put you at the end here with something sure. Of course, my objective always is only go for one hour, and uh, it is one hour. But, you know, I just want to say two, mention two things. So there is going to be a convener and secretary workshop uh, put on by Ed Vamanita. James on the 22nd of February, we sent a notice out. And we asked all the committee conveners and recorders or secretaries to attend this workshop, which they'll cover how basically how to run committees, how to record committee meetings and give you a lot of good ideas of how you can improve the way your committees are operating. We did this last year and we'll do it again this year. Uh, if a convener uh, cannot make it, please have somebody else from your committee uh, show up so they get the benefit of their workshop.
And I, but I will thank Hardin for mentioning one word, which we don't always want to hear about is money. He did mention money, so I will follow up with that. Uh, you will receive a notice shortly from the uh, Phil, Phil Landry Board of the, of the Kendall, of Kendall Philanthropy Board seeking donations to the fellowship fund. This is a one-time annual request for money. And of course, I hate to keep mentioning requests for money, uh, but this is an important uh, fund that basically funds uh, residents who, to no fault of their own, no longer have sufficient funds to pay for their monthly fee. Uh, it's been the policy of Kendall that nobody at Kendall will ever have to leave Kendall due to the lack of finances. Uh, and occasionally, during the occasion it happens uh, due to people's investments that they can no longer sufficiently cover their uh, monthly fees. During the past five years that we've had this fund, we, uh, we've had five residents that have received money from this fund. Over $300,000 has been dispersed to five different residents to help them pay their monthly fees. So this is a very important fund. Uh, donations are received, they're invested. Um, and most of the money comes from residents here. And I think that's important for all of us. So we, none of us know, hopefully we all will have sufficient funds to, uh, to remain here, but we don't know what our financial situation may be in the future. And so we wanna plan for that. And so we're trying to build up this fund uh, over the next few years. Uh, currently, we have about $1.5 million or $1.7 million in the investment fund. And every year we ask for additional funds from the residents uh, to donate to this. Um, we're, our goal is uh, approximately $5 million. I think people have said if we had at least $5 million, we think we could uh, uh, handle any future situations uh, for any residents that need this funding. Uh, obviously, if you uh, the people that receive these funds, it's confidential. It's only, only the CEO and, and uh, Felicia know about it. Uh, but it's important because one of us may be one of those persons that need the extra fund. Now, the funds are not used to pay for your whole fee, but uh, maybe to supplement your, your, your finances so that you can remain here. And nobody has ever been asked to leave Kendall during the last 20 years due to a lack of funding. So it's an important fund. You will receive a letter. Uh, within the next few days, I think, asking for your participation. And I'm not, as in this uh, staff appreciating fund, I'm not seeking $100,000 from you this time, uh, but we ask that uh, you consider, based on what we've been given in the past few years, that you make a, a, a donation to this fund as well. And that's all I have. So we're about four minutes over, but I want to thank you all for coming today and hope to see you next month. And enjoy your stay here. And just don't go out the front door. We have that big lift over there, or just go around it. So while they're repairing the grill here, so, so thank you very much, and we'll see you next month.